Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Okay, admittedly, this video has a provocative title, How to Remove Your X from an Image. But really, this video is just a continuation of a short series of videos that I'm doing where I demonstrate how to remove anything from a photo. In this video, we're removing a person from a photo. Now, we're going to remove the man from the photo. So we're going to pretend that the owner of this photo is the woman and she wants to have the man out of it. Now, I need to make a selection of the man. I'm going to use the pen tool. The pen tool is tricky to use, but if you do learn how to use it, you'll be able to lay down a path that you could convert into a selection. And that selection will, in most cases, many cases, be the be best selection possible. No other selection tool will do as good a job as the pen tool in many instances. The pen tool isn't the choice when you need to cut out hair, all right, for instance. But for many other uh, issues, the pen tool works best. Now, the thing I mentioned is it's a little tricky to use, so I'm not really going to give a full demonstration on how to use the pen tool. But I did do a video where I demo how to use the pen tool it includes a couple practice files. In the description below this video, I have a link to that video. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, in the top right-hand corner, a little flag will pop out right now with a link to that video, and it will be linked at the end of this video. Now, the reason why I want to use the pen tool here is right where her arm is overlapping his arm, I want to get a precise selection around there, and really none of the other selection tools will do as good a job as the pen tool. Then beyond that, the rest of the selection isn't important at all. So I really don't care about his hair. I'm going to select way out outside of his hair and outside of the rest of his body. I really am just more concerned right, with right in here. So I'm going to get the pen tool. I'm going to hit the P key on my keyboard. Pen tool's over here in the tool well right here. Make sure you're using the top tool that says pen tool because there's a number of tools in that little cubby. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command Plus on my Mac a couple times. It's Control Plus if you have a PC. Now, um, I'm going to give her a bit of a haircut too. I don't care about that, so um, that's not an issue. Also, I'll probably cut out a few pixels of her shirt as well, and that's fine too. I just want to make sure that none of his sweater is included. I want to make sure that's all outside of the selection or inside of the selection, I should say. So we're going to start right here and I'm just going to click once to lay down a point then click over here then click here and click here. Now what I'm going to do is I think I'll fast forward this video so you don't have to watch me giving her a haircut throughout all this and we'll come back and I'll have the path all the way around them and I'll make some comments about what I did. All right, we're back. I laid the path all the way around them, and I just want to point out that I made sure that I did a very precise path around her arm, but then once I got away from where she was overlapping him, it was a lot looser. You can see I'm way outside of his body, here, here, all the way around, way outside of his hair. Now, what's curious about this image is it looks like the main light source is coming from camera left. You could see how the right side of their face is brighter than their left side of their face. But on him, he's casting a shadow from camera right to camera left. So he's got a shadow over here. And I want to make sure that that shadow is inside of the selection so that we're going to get rid of the shadow too. So I have this path laid down uh, right around them. Now I need to convert this path into a selection. To do that, with the pen tool open, just right click inside of the path and then go down to make selection. Now what I want to do is I want to feather it slightly. So I want it just a little bit blurred around there. And we're just, uh, three pixels is fine, anti-aliased. Anti and I want it to be a new selection. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see now we have our selection. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use Content Aware Fill to fill inside of this selection with the wall. To do that, we're going to go up to Edit and then down to Content Aware Fill. Now I have it set up where it's custom, meaning I have to pick 
the pixels I want to use to sample from. Now I'm going to just pick over here. And what I suggest you do when you use Content Aware Fill is don't right away pick a lot of area. Start out with a smaller area. And then if it doesn't look right, add a little more, add a little more, add a little more. I found that works best. So I'm just going to come in here and you can see that it's not going to go inside of the selection. It's just going to sample outside of the selection. So I don't have to worry about staying in the in the lines or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to sample like right there, like that. And then as soon as I let go of my left mouse button, we'll look over here at the preview window and see how it replaces him. And it replaced him, but it kind of looks like there's a ghost image there, doesn't it? But that's okay. We're going to deal with that. So we're going to output this to a duplicate layer. So we're going to click OK. Okay, and it's going to think for a second, then it's going to have that duplicate layer. All right, he is disappeared. We still have our selection there. So I'm going to hit Command D on my Mac to deselect, Control D if you have a PC, and you can see that he's gone. But it does look like he was vaporized, so we have to deal with this. So there's different ways we're going to deal with kind of making this look better. First of all, I'm going to crop it. We're not going to keep all this space on the right. So that's going to eliminate probably all this kind of outside part here. But this part in here uh, just doesn't look right, right? So we got to deal with that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the patch tool. The patch tool's right here. Keyboard shortcut is J, but there's actually a number of different tools that share that keyboard shortcut. Uh, the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool, and the patch tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of come in very close to her arm and then do, and I found that if you just do smaller parts at first, it tends to do a better job. So we'll do that, and then we could do more over here. No, don't want to do that, sorry. We'll deselect, then we'll do over here. And bring it over there. Kind of try to soften it all a little bit. Like that. Over there, maybe. Yeah. All right, deselect. All right, now we need to soften that. So I'm going to get the spot healing brush tool and we'll just paint on some of these lines. Kind of smooth them out a little bit. Like kind of remove the rough edges if possible. Like that. So it's starting to look a little better. Like that. Jump up here and we'll do up here. Like this. Like this. Have another little kind of issue there. I'm going to get the patch tool again. So we'll go to the patch tool. And I'm just going to go like this. Put it up there. Looking a little better. Get that. Spot healing brush tool again. All right, so it's coming along. So you could see now, like this part of the wall here, it's not that much different than anywhere else that it kind of looks kind of odd like that. So we could just keep going up here. Again, if you want to do just maybe a little bit of larger area, you could get the patch tool and go like this and kind of look it around, like see where it matches. I have it set to content aware structure of seven and it's starting to look better. All right, now it's still not perfect yet. We have a lot more work to do. We're gonna crop it. I'm gonna get the crop tool, hit the C key on my keyboard. I have a width and height resolution. So we're gonna do a free form crop. I'm just gonna grab this edge and bring this in and bring this in and bring this down. All right, and maybe bring this in a little more and that just maybe a little bit more. And then we're gonna click the check mark. Okay, so, so far so good. So we have to deal with this edge right here. See how um, it just kind of looks weird right there. So we want to try to do something with that. So what I'm going to do is I want to get a selection to just her, but it doesn't have to be a very precise selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get any selection tool. If you just hit the W key on your keyboard, you'll pick a tool that's in this cubby. Uh, it doesn't matter which one, object selection, quick selection, magic wand. Right now it's on quick selection. But what I want to do with that open, what appears at the top are two buttons, and we want to deal with the select subject button. 
So we're just going to click on that. And you can see that after it thinks for a minute or two, it got a selection of the woman. And that's what I want. I just want this selection of the woman. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this uh, selection of the woman by hitting Command-J on my Mac. It's Control-J on your PC. So what we actually did was, is we have just her on the top. Now that's fine. What we want to do is make sure you're on that layer. Then what I'm going to do is click on this little FX button at the very bottom. And then we're going to click Drop Shadow. And then what I want to do is I want the drop shadow to go from the left to the right because you could see my left to the right because you could see on my left, the camera left of her face is brighter than the camera right on her face. So the light is coming this way. So I'm going to push a shadow over here. So we're going to go this way and we have that shadow there. And we could mess around with the spread, you know, bring it way out and make it less defined, more defined. We just want a little bit of a shadow, just a hint of a shadow. It's going to help sell this. All right, so we'll do that. And we'll kind of turn it off and on and see what it looks like. It doesn't look too bad right there. So we have a shadow on her. I'm just going to click OK. Now, what I want to do is I need to kind of still lighten it up over in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another selection of just her. So I'm going to hold in the command key on my Mac. It's control key if you have a PC and just click on this layer where she's already clipped. And when I do that, I'll get my selection back. Now what I want to do is I want to expand the selection out a bit to make sure that I'm outside of her shirt because we're going to be brightening up her shirt on this edge. So then what we'll do is we'll go to select and then we'll go to modify and then we'll go to expand. And I don't, not a lot. It depends on the resolution of your image, but I think maybe five pixels is good for this image. So we'll click OK. So it just brought our selection out a little bit. Now we're going to leave that selection there. But what we want to do is get the dodge tool. If we go over here on the left, you can see that this tool right here is the dodge tool. The keyboard shortcut is O. All right, if you don't see that, click and hold with your left mouse button. You can see that, that it's, this cubby is shared with the dodge tool, burn tool, and sponge tool. The dodge tool is going to make this brighter. I think exposure of 40%, we're going to brighten the shadow. So we're just going to take the darkest parts of this area, and we're just going to lighten it. Because it is, just kind of looks funky. It just doesn't look right. And because we have that selection there, it's not affecting out here. It's only affecting inside of the selection. So I'll deselect, hit Command D, and you can see how it looks much better. Now there's the drop shadow. I could come back in and readjust the drop shadow by double clicking right where it says drop shadow in the layers panel. And then I could come back in here and maybe bring the distance in a little bit and click OK. And that's it. I, think it looks decent. Um, you know, it looks natural to me. So we got rid of her ex. Now she really likes this picture and she has it of just her. Um, hopefully that helps. You learned a couple more techniques, hopefully that you didn't know about before. And again, I'm sorry I didn't go through a complete demonstration of the pen tool because that really deserves a video all of its own. And again, uh, that video will be linked in the description below this video and at the end of this video. Make sure you check it out if you're interested in learning how to use the pen tool. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>